Morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a little bit of an experimental mod. I've never done this before. But I have used these Duluth pack sacks for quite a long time. And I've got lots and lots of different models of pack sacks from Duluth. But the most popular is probably the number three canoe style pack. And it's just a large envelope style pack. And I really like that style of pack because it affords you, if you're smart enough not to overfill it, a pack that's big enough to carry enough stuff in for a week if you have to, but enough stuff in it for a day hike if you choose to. And this one is wax canvas, and that makes them fairly water resistant, but it doesn't make them waterproof. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use this Flex Seal liquid black rubber, and I'm actually going to try to seal the bottom five inches of this pack on both sides and the seams so that when it's sitting directly on the ground it doesn't have a chance of absorbing moisture at all and it's a fairly expensive mod to a very expensive pack but it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time so I thought today I would go ahead and do it on video now this stuff this flex seal is fairly expensive but it dries basically like a rubber and vulcanized or rubberized canvas material has been used for a long time in wilderness environments. In fact, the vulcanized or gum blanket was one of the most prized possessions of the Civil War soldier, and that process was done by Goodyear during the Civil War, and they made thousands and thousands of those gum blankets, and southern soldiers would oftentimes steal them from dead northern soldiers because they were so useful at being a moisture barrier to the ground because they were almost completely waterproofed piece of canvas. And even if you set them directly on a wet surface like a pack would sit down on wet ground, it's not going to absorb moisture. So this one is going to get painted on the seams here. It doesn't have a seam on the bottom because it is an envelope style design, which I like. And I'm just going to take a board to give myself a fairly straight line and swap it on there with a cheap $1.25 nylon paintbrush here and let it dry. So stay with me. Now I want this to be a fairly neat job. I mean, I could just throw this stuff on here and brush it on and hope for the best, but I'd like to get it fairly neat on here. So I'm gonna try to get a fairly straight line across here. In fact, I'll probably lay the thing, this pack this direction. I've got the straps have been worked in really good and they've been coated with fixing wax. They can use a couple more coats. You can see some of the wax build up on the straps now. And I will wax them a few more times before I start to use this pack. This pack has never been used yet. It's brand spanking new. Again, like I said, this is kind of an expensive modification to a pretty expensive pack, but I have faith that it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to go right below this and do the bottom part of this pack. You could probably do this with a pack that was not already waxed as well to waterproof the bottom of the pack but this is just going to add security for me as far as waterproofing goes to this bottom area of the pack even though I know the whole pack is already made water resistant now before I turn this over fold it to get this portion here where the fold is I'm going to try to get up against this board. All right, so we'll let that dry a good bit and then we'll come back out and do the other side and the seams on the outside and this area is folded right here on the bottom as well. Right, so there she is hanging over a rope, completely painted. Now we'll just have to let that rubber cure. I've got one spot right there I want to touch up real quick while I get the brush wet. And looking pretty good. All right, so we've let this pack dry now for two days with this liquid rubber on it. And it's dried out, still pliable. Doesn't show any signs of cracking or anything like that. It's not really putting any residue off on my hands at all now. So I'd say 
it's ready to go. Now what's the test of something like this to quantify whether it worked or not? Really it's just use because I could fill this thing up with water and it probably wouldn't leak anyway because the fabric would swell up, canvas swells up with water in it. That's why canvas buckets work the way they do. And this one's already got wax on it as well. So it's probably fairly waterproof with water standing in it for a few minutes either way. This was really just to more protect the bottom because that layer of wax does wear off over time. And this is if it was just sitting on the ground in the snow or falls into a puddle or sitting in the bottom of this trapping sled or something like that and gets water in it or blood or anything like that, it's not gonna soak into the bottom of the pack. That was the whole idea behind putting that liquid rubber on this pack. And you know, a lot of guys ask me about packs and I carry lots of different packs, but most of them are a large bucket style pack like this number three pack sack some of them are a little smaller, but they generally only have one to two, maybe three pockets on the outside, like in a large Alice pack would have, and very little on the inside other than the bucket, because in a situation like this where I'm on the trap line, or if I'm hunting, or if I'm going to be in camp for a few days, or I'm trucking away from a base camp for an overnight, I really want to be able to put, you know, a full-size axe down in that thing and just have the handle barely sticking out. I want to be able to Put a full-size wool blanket wadded up in there, a full-size tarp, a nice big roll of cordage, and something like a container of some sort, a big two-quart bush pot. So it's large items that I just want to shove inside here and be done with it that aren't going to have to be compartmentalized and just covers my bases with the five C's. I've got all my fire starting equipment and implements in my pockets. I've got my knife on my belt. If all the other five C's are covered inside this big bucket, and it weighs a total of 20, 25 pounds, I don't care. That's fine with me. That's all I really need. So this whole thing with putting this liquid rubber on here was really an experiment of mine to see how well it would hold up over time, which again, only time's gonna tell that, and how good it would do at sitting places where it might get my gear wet or might wear on the bottom of this pack and wear that wax coating off over time, which does happen. I've got a bushcraft pack that I've had for several years now that's got a mouse hole in one of the pockets even from sitting in a tent and mouse ate a hole in the pocket. But it's a very comfortable pack. It's a very flexible pack. It does everything I want it to do, but it's getting to the point now where that waxing of the canvas is starting to wear off of it a little bit and I could reproof it easy enough. But I carried a large pack like this one at our last uh, uh, scout class it was out here where we travel out into the wildlife area for four days and four nights and I carried a big pack like this the only difference was it had a gusset in the bottom of it it was another style of canoe pack by Duluth and it met my knees perfectly the tump line that comes with these that goes on the top of the pack if you start to get too much weight on your shoulders or start to get tired you can throw that tump line over your head lift that weight off your shoulders a little bit and walk for a while and take a rest and it's just a very very versatile pack system even for packing some distance with your gear it's not just for canoeing and things like that there's been lots and lots of writers write about this pack as being the most versatile of all different types of backpacks that were available back in the days of woodcraft and camping and i still believe that it's one of the most versatile style packs today i appreciate you joining me for this video i thank you for everything you do for our school for our family for our business for all our sponsors instructors affiliates and friends and i'll be back with another video as soon as i can thanks guys